In this video, I'm going to talk about three simple steps to mastering the DMs and based on the five most common problems that everybody seems to face when it comes to DM outreach. Let's go. What's up, Flowjack Connector? Sean back at you with another high ticket tune up. Bam! Hope you're doing really well today. Make sure and smash the like button. Share this out to somebody else that needs to get a little bit better at sales, specifically when it comes to DMs today. That's interesting. And of course, if you find some value throughout this video, please subscribe to the channel because that's why I do this. My oath, my whole move in life is to make traditional sales people not suck anymore and just become a sales professional. That's really what it's all about. And so today we're going to talk about some awesome stuff. We're going to get into the DMs a little bit, three steps to master the DMs. And I'm going to talk about the five major problems that everybody seems to face when it comes to the DM environment. So let's get into it. Here's the five problems that most people face when it comes to DMing. Number one is a lack of personalization. I don't know what happens, but for whatever reason, when somebody goes in to start DMing people, they forget how to have common sense and how to actually talk to other people. And they just take all the personalization out of the messaging that they're sending. So you might have seen this one where it's like, hey, Sean, or hey, Sean, or hey, your name, whatever. Buy my stuff. Here's my blah, 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 blah. Throw up all over you. And that's very not personal. It doesn't work very well. And it causes the anxiety around like uh, just the anxiety of messaging people in the first place. So that's the first major big problem is, is we need to eliminate the lack of personalization and stick with me because by the end of this, I'm going to share three solutions that are so, so simple that you can apply them today in your business. The second problem is people don't provide value. Now there's a lot of different ways to provide value. One of the ways that I love to provide value more than anything else is to provide clarity around a problem or a situation that my prospects seem to face, right? Some people say, oh, you gotta provide value and give away all your free coaching and your free consulting. However, that, that usually leads to not the sale because if you do that and you give them everything you have, and I remember a story, I was working with this guy, Jeff, and Jeff came to me, he's like, Sean, what should my DM messaging say? And I was like, well, let me look at it. Let's reword some of your messaging. And I ended up getting so into it because I love it so much. I ended up rewriting like his whole uh, script that he was using in the DMs. And he went off and he's like, let me test this. And, and, and if this works, I'm going to come back and I'm going to buy your biggest package. And I'm going to be a client. It's like, great. So I gave him the script. I did all the work for him. I thought it was a lot of providing value to him. And then what happened was he started using it and it started getting so much results that it overloaded his business with new clients and new opportunity that he never came back and bought my services. And I said to him one day, I was like, dude, this works. Like, look at the numbers. He's like, yeah, I'm too busy to buy your stuff, dude. Sorry. And he left. And so not when you, when you provide too much value in terms of like giving coaching and consulting uh, advice to people, be careful what you give, right? So not providing value is another problem that a lot of people face. I just gave you a great example of how you can do that. Just providing clarity on the problem, asking what they've done to kind of try to solve it or fix it. That is great value for anybody out there. The next problem people run into all the time is being too pushy, right? You've probably seen the text where it's like you send a good message that you receive a good first message, you respond to it. And then it's like, oh, that's great. That's cool. This person's actually trying to connect with me. And then it's like, buy my stuff, buy my stuff, buy my stuff, buy my stuff. And then every message is just a call to action, call to action all the time. Well, that is a humongous no, no, when it comes to DMing. So just be careful when you're not being too pushy, right? There is a balance there. Um, next one is neglecting timeliness. This one is huge, right? Money is in the follow up. Speed and money equal the same thing, right? So speed equals money and follow up equals money. Then we need to be speedy when we do our follow up work in order to ne not neglect timelines. It's very valuable to be aware and actually be able to respond in a quick fashion to people when they message or reach out to you. And the last big problem that most people face is they just ignore doing any follow up. Chris, our CEO, came to me the other day and he said, Sean, I was talking with this company who uses another autobot chat program we're not an autobot chat program but they use a different type of software to do auto responding and some of that stuff right off of their facebook page and um what happened was is he opted into a couple of these people using the software and he got a first great message that was awesome and then he waited to see two three three days four days five days six days and he never ever ever got any more follow-up from that prop person. So remember, there's a couple of key things that you want to remember. 60% of engagement comes at four touch points. So if you don't have four touch points in your process, like get them, right? 
80% of sales deals are closed at 13 touch points. So again, if you're trying to close business, I'm a sales minded folk person, not a, not a marketing minded focused person. And so I know that 13 touch points in a process for sales is, is kind of like the key baseline of where you want to start, right? So these are the five major problems. And let's talk about the three steps to solve and master the DMs, okay? Number one, develop your voice. This is such a big thing, right? Don't try to talk in someone else's voice. Don't try to be somebody else. Don't even use ChatGPT until you kind of have identified your own voice. Start by understanding your brand's voice. What are you trying to achieve? What are the things you're trying to do? Is it casual? Is it friendly? Is it more formal? Is it professional, right? Your DM communication should reflect the personality of your brand. This will ensure that your interactions are consistent and memorable and practice writing short, concise messages that still sound like you, right? Remember a DM to conversation, so keep it natural and personable. Don't try to push or do any of those five problems that I just listed. So that's number one is developing your voice. Number two is you need to listen and respond. No coach, no book, no service, no program, no mastermind, nothing is going to tell you what to say and get it right every single time, right? I don't care if a coach says, if you do it exactly like this, you say the exact words that I say, you're going to get the right results. That's not true, right? In some cases it might work, but majority of the time, it's never going to work. The best feedback that you can ever get from for any of your stuff that you're doing is listening to the people you're talking to, listen to your prospects, listen to your customers, et cetera, et cetera. We prefer going into a cold market. Why? Because a cold market is doesn't have any emotional tie to you and they're very quick to give you constructive feedback. Now it may hurt, it may not feel good the first couple of times, that's fine. Like that, whatever it is, it's just what it is. But just, I listen to those things and then I tweak my messages. And sometimes if I'm in the cold market messaging a prospect, I'm saying, well, hey, look, like if you had this software business, what would be the first message you'd say? Sometimes people give me a message they would say, sometimes not. What's great is if they do give you a message, you can use that message and say, okay, let me re let me try it again. And then you send the exact message they sent to you right back to them. And then they're like, ha, huh, you got me, right? So really interesting to play off the responses that you're getting, but you need to have two ears and one mouth when we're doing sales work or messaging work. And we need to use that in proportion. It's very, very valuable, right? So listen to what your audience is saying, answer their questions, acknowledge their concerns, provide value in your responses that you're giving to them, and people will come back to you. It works. The, the law of reciprocity is a real thing. The more you listen and respond appropriately, the more rapport and the more trust you're going to build and the more long-term success you will have for your brand, right? This doesn't apply if you're just going for a quick buck. This does apply if you're trying to build a very strong business foundation and grow your business. Lastly, use tools like Flowchat, right? The reason we built Flowchat is because it solved our own problem. Tools like Flowchat can take your DM game to the next level. It's not just about sending messages. It's about managing them effectively. Flowchat helps you organize all of your DMs across all the different platforms. It's the only one of its kind that works on nine platforms. So it's all the platforms in one place. I know a lot of people come to me and they're like, Sean, I'm using this product over here on Twitter. I'm using this product over here on LinkedIn. I'm using this product on Meta Properties. Well, that sucks because now you have all these different product places. You have to go log in, check things, do it all. What if you could just have one, one that did everything? That's what Flowchat gives you the ability to do right from the start, right? It also assists in identifying conversational patterns and optimal response times, which can be crucial for engagement. In our pipeline view, you can set up timed responses of when you're going to go back and check on people. Usually 24 to 48 hours is a good timeline for you to connect to check on a message kind of a thing because most people are busy, especially business owners, right? Finally, we've continued to dump AI tech right at your fingertips. It provides suggestions on what to say next, making sure you always hit the right note. So when you do these three things and you have... Um, you can eliminate those five problems that I shared. Again, just a quick recap, right? You remember the five problems. They're there. They'll never go away. But if you develop your voice, if you listen and respond to your prospects, and you use tools that can really help you amplify and accelerate what you're already doing in the DMs, you're going to win all the time. And with that said, that's all I got for you today. I hope that one was valuable. I know this is something that I preach and practice each and every single day. And I wish for you to do the same again, if to share, like this video, share it out to somebody who might need to get better at sales. And of course, if you did find value in that, please subscribe to the channel because that's what I do it for. Right? So with that said, I'm looking forward to seeing you on the next one. Ciao for now.